it's Heather from Think It Works, and today I have a lot to share with you. Join me while we make a wonderful set of accessories for the secret garden. One of my favorites is this vintage watering can. But then again, I find this little trug with its miniature gardening implements very charming. And who wouldn't love this wheelbarrow? Oh, and don't forget about the shovel and the rake and the pitchfork and, well, you can tell, I'm really excited. So excited that I have made all of these designs available for you to download for free. You'll find everything you need in the description and together we'll make all of these wonderful secret garden accessories. Let's get started. The tools and materials that we'll be using are pretty simple. I've got a metal file here and an emery board, a pair of snips, tweezers, a couple of cylindrical objects of varying sizes, super glue and baking soda, plastic coffee stirrers, bamboo skewers, and toothpicks. Oh, and a spray bottle of water will come in handy too. Okay, once you've cut out your SVG files, it's time to begin assembling them. I keep all of the pieces in these handy page protectors. You'll find all of these pieces, which are small hand tools and long handled tools as well. We use this set of shapes to construct the wheelbarrow. There's a framework, the wheel assembly, and the box of the wheelbarrow itself. This group of shapes creates a little feeding platform for birds. There's the back wall, the side walls, the bottom, the roof, and some trim pieces. Everything goes together with super glue, and I'm going to begin with the wheelbarrow putting on the sides to the box and the front of the box. You'll find four of these pieces and they work to create the outer structure of the wheelbarrow. Layer two of them together, one for each side of the structure. And then glue together the wheels. It's a little finicky but you can totally do this and then add the tiny circles on top one on either side to create a very dimensional and sturdy wheel now it's time to place the framework on the outside edges of the wheelbarrow line up the angled piece with the very front of the box and make sure that the pointy bit is facing down Hold it in place for just a couple of moments and your wheelbarrow is really beginning to take shape. Very cool. The wheel will be placed between these two forks. Once the assembly is complete, coat the entire surface of the wheelbarrow with liquid super glue and allow it to dry. Make sure that you have adequate ventilation. Those super glue fumes can be a bit nasty. Here I'm using an old gift card to help spread it over the surface of the chipboard. And then I'm helping it to cure instantly by giving it a bath of baking soda and then brushing away all that powder with a dry paintbrush. Next I'm going to smooth out the surface of the little wheel using an emery board. All those layers of chipboard can then be coated with more super glue and a bit of baking soda added. This can then be smoothed out. The wheel needs an axle, so I'll be using a toothpick and I'll put a bead on one end of it and snip away the tip. Now a couple of bead spacers are going to be used. Here's how it goes together. Slide the toothpick through the aperture, put on one of the bead spacers, then add the wheel 
and the other spacer. Slide the toothpick back, gently spread the forks apart until you can just barely slip the tip of the toothpick through and then slide the whole assembly over. Snip off the outer edge, trim down the toothpick until you can add a bead on that side of the axle. And now you have a working wheel. Smooth away any roughness with sandpaper or an emery board. Some of the SVG files in this bundle have little tiny squares that get cut out. You can save those and use them to help detail your pieces. I'm using four of these little squares on either side of the framework that surrounds the wheelbarrow. I really like the look that that gives. Next, I'm going to assemble the feeding platform for the bird. I'm gluing the bottom to the back and then one of the sides on either side. A little bit of super glue applied to the exterior helps it to be very sturdy. Do your best to line up each of the pieces of the roof, one on either side, so that they meet in a beautiful peak in the center. And then apply the trim at both the front and the back of the edge of the roof. So cute. This is where those tweezers really come in handy. One of the things I really love about working with chipboard that's been hardened with super glue is that it is super tough and I'm able to achieve a really smooth finish by sanding with a great deal of force. I like that. Okay, now it's time to work on these vintage garden shears and we begin this process by hardening the chipboard with super glue. You want to apply a thin layer to either side of each piece and cure it immediately with baking soda if you like. I'm adding more depth to the handles by adding layers of super glue and baking soda, building it up into a sort of mounded form so that the handles have greater thickness. To join these two pieces together, I'm using two more of those little tiny squares that have had holes poked through the center. And I'm using a small sewing pen and running it right through that hole in the center of the square. And then aligning the two sides of the shears and pushing the pin through. Then picking up the other tiny square of chipboard and sliding it all the way against the shears, creating a little bit of pressure. Once they're tight, I then add a tiny drop of super glue onto the chipboard and harden it with baking soda. Then I snip away the end of the pin and now you have a pair of shears that open and close. To keep the blades of the shears in alignment, you can add a tiny stop with super glue and a tiny disc of chipboard glued onto one of the handles right at the spot where it will stop the blades from crossing over each other in the closed position. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Harden that little nubbin of chipboard and you'll see that it stops the blade from closing all the way and then you can file down that little nub until they close perfectly. Here are the chipboard pieces that will result in garden implements. You can see their measurements in this image. Let's begin with the tiniest pieces. This little claw and a trowel. We'll be using a toothpick for each one, a bit of water, and a cylindrical object like the handle 
of a paintbrush. I've also got a square of six millimeter thick fun foam. And that allows me to press with quite a bit of pressure with the rounded end of my paintbrush to create the typical rounded shape of the trowel. And now I can press the softened chipboard around the end of a toothpick in order to create a very sturdy handle. Again, tweezers really come in handy when working at this small scale. We'll be using this same method for all of the implements. Dampening the chipboard and then creating rounded shapes by pressing against the foam, then solidifying those shapes with super glue and hardening everything with the baking soda to help it cure immediately. This also adds a layer of strength to the final piece. For the pitchfork, I'm using a slightly larger diameter cylinder in order to create that characteristic gentle curve to the tines. And then while the piece is still damp and retaining that soft curve, I'm adding super glue to all of the edges and then making sure to allow it to cure before I work on the handle portion. For the rake, it's the same thing. Dampen, shape, harden with super glue. For the shovel, I'm using this large ball tool to create that scoop shape and then hardening that immediately. Once all of these implements have cured, then it's time to go back and work on strengthening them even more with a layer of super glue and baking soda. To install the handles for these larger pieces, I'll be using a bamboo skewer and then wrapping the handle around the tip of the skewer and gluing everything in place. This part can be a little challenging and the chipboard may begin to disintegrate, but don't let it conquer you. Just douse it with more super glue and it will be fine. Follow this same procedure for the other long handled tools. Oh, and just as an aside, if you're not aware, you can clean super glue off of your skin using acetone. Okay, we're at the ugly phase, but we've got the main shapes in place. Time to trim these down and smooth the ends. Excellent. Now I'm going to create this little tiny hoe dampening, creating the shape that I want, hardening with super glue, and curing instantly with baking soda. I know, it gets a little boring watching the same process over and over, but I want to make sure that you have all the information you need to succeed at making your secret garden accessories. Here's the little claw, it's just so cute. Yep, more super glue. I know, shocking. Once it's cured, you can file this with a metal file. It's amazingly strong. Okay, once they're cured, you can snip away all of the excess toothpick. And then, you guessed it, Smooth away any roughness with an emery board. Next, I'm going to make a set of terracotta flower pots. This is really fun. Now, you've probably seen this done a hundred times. If you love miniatures, you've no doubt made several of these yourself. Because these are made of chipboard, 
they're slightly sturdier than their cardstock counterparts. And of course, I'm using super glue and baking soda and making sure that they are extremely durable. And then smoothing out all that ugly clumped glue. You'll find these little tiny circles as part of the file and they glue directly onto the bottom of each of the flower pots. Then these crescent shaped pieces are added around the upper rim of each pot. Now during the prototyping phase here these crescents were a little too short but the file has been corrected and they'll be plenty long. To create the saucers in which the flower pots can sit Use these long, thin strips glued around the exterior of these discs. I like to work on a ceramic tile because if by chance any of the pieces happen to get glued to the tile by accident, it's easy to scrape them away without causing too much damage. This SVG bundle will cut six individual flower pots and their little saucers. You can make as many or as few as you would like. I got a little carried away and had to make all six. Once you get into sort of a rhythm with it, it goes really quickly, especially because the super glue cures instantly. I love that. I mean, PVA is great stuff and I use it all the time, but I really am impatient and super glue makes things happen so quickly. Next up, let's make a ladder. For this, you'll need some coffee stirrers. And guess what? Some super glue. You'll find four of these perforated strips with angled ends. You'll want to glue two of them together and each one creates one of the side rails and then there are these little angled framework pieces that get applied on either side of each of these side rails so all together you'll have four layers of chipboard on each rail this means that your little ladder is going to be incredibly sturdy. Once it's all assembled, coat it with super glue and allow it to cure. I'm especially careful to cover all of the exposed edges. This helps bond all the layers together. And then smooth that surface. Okay, I insert a toothpick inside of a cut down coffee stirrer to make it easier to thread them through. And then I just get rid of the toothpicks and snip away the excess plastic tubing. There we go. I just love that little hollow that goes all the way through. Somehow, I find that more satisfying than just using, say, a strip of chipboard or a toothpick for those rungs. The ladder is designed to lean comfortably against a vertical surface. Next up, the vintage watering can. It starts with this arc-shaped piece that has a hole in the middle, and you treat it exactly the same way as you did the terracotta pots. Roll it into a cylinder and then glue it onto the base. I think I picked the wrong circle for my base because it's too big. I promise it really is sized to fit. And then to make the spout, grab a scrap of regular copy paper. Roll it around one of your paintbrush handles. Adjust the cone until you have a really sharp point on one end and a wider end at the other. And then just keep snipping away until it fits comfortably 
into that aperture. Hold it at the angle that you want it to maintain and then glue it in place with, you guessed it, super glue and baking soda. Now, you can add these handles in any configuration that you would like. I put one over the top and then angled another one off toward the back. And then for added interest and strength, a snipped off toothpick gets placed at the very top edge of the spout. Now, it looks kind of weird right now, but just wait till we get the finishes in place. It's going to look really cool. Add more detailing if you would like. I put tiny squares, one on either side, at the intersection where the straps meet the body of the watering can. So cute. All right, what's next? Oh, yes. If you have a bunch of strips like this, you can make a garden truck. Now, I've never done this before, and you probably have, so forgive my clumsy method here, but I'm just using these strips of chipboard to weave a rough basket shape, keeping in mind that a traditional garden truck is usually almost rectangular in shape. The shape here isn't quite right. It should be a little less deep, more of a shallow rectangle, but I still like the way that it turned out. I'm completely winging this, but I realized with all these strips lying around, I just had to give it a go. I hope you do too, because it's really fun and a lot easier than I thought it would be. And because we're working with super glue, it's really, really fast. I'm using cheap acrylic craft paints to simulate the look of terracotta. I've blended some red and yellow for orange and then toned that down with a little bit of brown. And just coating the exteriors and interiors of all of the little terracotta pots using a heat gun between layers to make sure that everything dries. And here I'm painting the saucers after having temporarily affixed them to some painter's tape. Next, I'm coming in with a wash of a blended black and brown acrylic craft paint. And I'm putting a messy layer on the areas that I think would accrue the most soiling over the years and then kind of blending it out with my fingertips. Now I'm going to be using chalk pastels scraped into a powder to create some soft blended effects over the top of the acrylic paint. I just used the blade of a scalpel to create powder and now I dab bits of matte medium on the surface and then dip a dry brush into the powder and then tap that onto the surface. You can use whatever colors make the most sense to you. I'm alternating here between a soft gray and a green, and then adding layers of white as well. For the final layer, it's crushed cilantro leaves embedded into matte medium. There we go. I'm going to be using a little of this Model Air terracotta in order to fill up some of these pots to simulate soil. So in goes some PVA glue and a little bit of the clay and I tamp it down in layers until the pot is filled. PVA glue goes over the top and then I'll be using my go-to substance for soil which is used and dried coffee grounds. 
embedded right into the PVA. Now for this one, I want the pot to be lying on its side and sort of spilling soil out. So I've filled it with the air dry clay at a sort of angle and then coated everything with the coffee grounds. Adding a dark wash onto the ladder and doing the same thing with the wheelbarrow. I take extra care with this piece because I'm particularly fond of it. For the long handled and short handled garden implements, I'm putting a base coat of black on the areas that will be simulated metal and then distressing the handles. I'm adding white chalk pastel onto the wheelbarrow and onto the handles and the ladder onto any of the pieces that appear to be wood. This helps simulate that bleached out gray tone that wood acquires over time. And now I want all of these pieces to appear as though they were originally part of a set that was painted in this jaunty red. So all of the handles are getting the red acrylic craft paint treatment. I don't bother to distress the handles of the little hand implements here, but when it comes to the long handled tools, I want to give the impression that years of handling and exposure to the weather have worn away that jaunty red paint. So I've taken care to add the red at the top and the bottom of each of the handle shafts, but we have that bleached gray in the center area where they would have been held by tiny hands. Multiple coats of black acrylic craft paint are applied to the miniature vintage watering can. I really want to build up a good finish on this piece, so I take care to get full coverage and dry between the coats. I also continue to add more and more weathering passes to the wheelbarrow, making sure to darken the areas of the piece that would be closest to the ground and likely to be splattered by mud. I use my imagination to try to envision where these pieces would have received the most wear and tear over the years of exposure. And I just let that guide my hand. I imagine that the ladder would have been left out in the weather more often than it should have been. So I add dark staining beneath each of the rungs on either side. Now it's time for some metal effects. So I'm using metallic, metallic wax in aged silver and I'm applying it with a small fragment of sea sponge. Rust effects are being created with chalk pastel in brown and yellow and red and black being dabbed on using matte medium to hold them in place. applying the same treatment to the garden shears, giving them a slight metallic finish, and then coming back in with the chalk pastel rust effects. You can be as heavy handed or as subtle as you would like. The chalk pastel really gives you lots of freedom. I'm going to mount this feeding platform onto a little pole. And then once it's in place, I'll be adding 
some seeds. Now, of course, they're out of scale, but I couldn't resist. And I love the final look. Once installed in the back corner of the secret garden, the feeding platform looks entirely at home. All of the pieces have a kind of charm, at least for me. They feel rustic, and yet they somehow help to convey the spirit of the secret garden, which is all about believing in the magic of growth and life and turning toward the light and away from isolation, darkness, and bitterness. I love these tiny pieces more than I can say. And I hope that if you choose to make them as well, you'll find the experience as satisfying and full of delight as I have. Bit by bit, the secret garden is filling up with all of the symbols of life well lived in spite of tragedy. Here's one of my favorite passages from The Secret Garden. Sometimes, since I've been in the garden, I've looked up through the trees at the sky and I have had a strange feeling of being happy, as if something were pushing and drawing in my chest and making me breathe fast. Magic is always pushing and drawing and making things out of nothing. Everything is made out of magic, leaves and trees, flowers and birds, badgers and foxes and squirrels and people. So it must be all around us, in this garden, in all the places. I hope that something you experience today, somewhere, somewhere in all the places, reminds you of the magic that's inside of you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Until next time, bye.